Ain't no slowing down now. We're going. <laughs> David McDonald with the Penn Sports Entertainment. We're here at the Orbit Group in Grand Rapids. And I'm with Brandon Clinton from Craving Hamley. Brandon, how are you? Um, it's kind of been four years. Four years. God. Eight years. So, I'm getting old. You're getting older. Thanks. Um, <laughs> but you just told me that yourself. It was it was your admission. I thought it would be under the bus that told you how old I was. No, I wouldn't do that. That that secret is between you and you know. Uh, the people, it's out there. The people you tell. Google it's it. probably on Wikipedia. It's on there. Okay. <laughs> you guys are back on tour after uh, me. Got it. You guys did tour for a while. But the last album was in 2010, and you're about to release a new album next week. So who we are? Um, what, what is this like for you guys to be back? Uh, I mean, honestly, it's it's awesome because we've been just sitting at home, kind of doing our own thing, kind of you know picking up side jobs and so. And uh, it's just I don't know. We we got back on the road last week. And we we're like, how do we do this anymore? I've almost been gone so long. I don't even know what it's like to tour anymore. But it feels really good. I'm really excited for the new music. I feel, actually we all feel that this, this is the new us, the new sound, the new what is to come of Frank Hamm. So I, I have to ask, I mean, when you guys went back into the studio after being away for so long, um, what was that experience like of saying we have to we're, we're starting over essentially? Um, what was the what was the was was it a good time? Was the was it a strange time or was it really more natural for you? Well, I mean, if anything, it was very stressful because as a band, when you disappear for a very long time, it, it's a make or break for the band. You could just be done, and to come back after doing the two years off with the new material, we're getting a lot more great vibes from this new record after being gone for a long time. We're starting to like, I think, realize that the the separation and the break was very needed for the pers like, personal lives of the band, and not only that, just to kind of give your fans like a little breather because you can oversaturate your town, your, your city, or everywhere that you're playing to where people are like, oh, well, I've seen that show once, I've seen it twice, I've seen it three times, you know, it's like, you just want them to come back and see a new experience or a new sound or something new, you know, and, uh, and so far, honestly, the break has kind of hurt us a little bit, but it's been really nice because it's a chance for us to take the next step forward. I, I, I guess looking back to like when you guys started out back in, you know, God, uh, 2006, 2007, even earlier, um, you guys were so young at that time, you sort of grew up in the band, and then you had sort of the, the experience of life becoming more than just your music. And what was it like when those two worlds kind of met? Like, just you're saying, just when you realize that it's not only just playing music, that it's your personal life and the music kind of thing? Yeah. I mean, uh, and to me, uh, I actually do uh, pro audio sound and things like that in production. And uh, I was doing that before the band and then started doing music. And it was kind of nice to be on the other side of the fence. Uh, you know, taking this time off, I went back in to doing a little bit of sound. It was nice to be at home every night, but I was just working the local clubs. You know, so again, it's like it doesn't really change what I do outside of this much, except for I'm watching other bands perform on stage every night. So I'm kind of picking up on what to do and what not to do. So if anything, I might have learned something by taking the two years. Uh, but you know, uh, our personal lives realize that it's more about you know that it's more about than just the music. It's I don't know. It's a it's a good feeling to know that, that you know that we can play music and have a separate life other than just the music. Awesome, dude. And and I didn't know that. And so I have to ask, um, having that time to essentially like have almost an off season from touring and just research and learn. Um, what were some of the things you were seeing out there in the scene when you guys were gone? Uh, and anything, seeing a lot of times how how to treat people when you're on the road. Because when you have bands that travel through, you know, you just you introduce yourself to them, and you know, it's like you might meet them on a bad day. Or you meet them on a bad day. It's kind of like, oh no, you know, it's like you know, they might treat me bad, and then it might be off the wrong foot. So I kind of learned to just treat people like you want to be treated. I know when I walk into a new venue, I don't want them 
people that work there or the locals to be like, that man, they were rude, or that man, they're not really friendly. Same thing, you know, it's like, well, that man, man, those guys were so nice. Like, and that's the kind of atmosphere that as a band, you know, that we want our persona to be when we leave the venue. And it's like, it's cool working at a venue back home because I see what, I'll tell the band all the time, like, oh, let's not do that. Like, that's going to make us look different, you know, let's, let's be positive. Being a bunch of good old boys from Nashville pays off sometimes. Excellent, man. Um, for you guys, I mean, this has sort of always been um, what you guys are doing with this new album. Um, what would you say this band has learned from all of the years of touring and recording and then having that break? Um, would you say there's a different identity that you have now? Uh, I mean, the maturity level is definitely different because uh, we were getting a little older, so we realized that this is that chance for us to really play music for the rest of our lives. Or, this is the make or break to where it can be in a year from now. We're sitting on our couch doing the real job thing again, you know? It's the luxury to be playing music on the road. And uh, hopefully, you know, with the... Uh, children here with their headphones on their head and you know that that's the thing is like we all looking forward to that because there's like a couple guys in the band that have children and one of them's got like a four-year-old and it's like we start to realize that we're getting older by watching their children get older and we just want them to be able to we want them to live the lifestyle of, you know what you know how I
well on the road you travel in a vessel that you cannot do a number two in. So you get to a location where you can finally have a good rest and ease your mind and think a little bit and when you get there you realize that they have that real real thin single ply toilet paper that but it ain't any good so we have uh, we've made a conclusion that we're gonna buy a toilet paper on the road and we're gonna keep on it on the back so when you go to places that have very bad toilet paper crappy toilet paper but a towel then you can uh you can use your good stuff you know? i just i actually just got an idea and, and tell me if you like this but the idea of a band like Grim Hanley beginning a, a sponsorship sort of with a good toilet paper company. But like, you know, I'm down. Charmin, you know, exactly. You know. You know. And I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe this can spread to the whole touring circuit of, you know, all bars. Oh, the experience of, it, of it, it, improving the defecating experience of touring musicians. How, yes, how awesome would it be to have a bus wrapped in Charmin toilet paper? I'm just imagining that the you yeah, know, so like, you know, peel it off. exactly, and it's just like trailing on the back of the bus. Yeah, yeah, it's all like you like it, kind of stuck to your shoe, and it's just trailing behind you. I'm, I'm just saying, if you want to pitch this to the other guys and see how it goes, and maybe make a few phone calls, I, I'm looking out for I you like guys. how you roll, you know what I'm saying? For, for those that don't know, me and Frank and Emily go back just, just a little bit, um, back, back to the beginning of this band, I mean, um, and you guys have always been very nice, true, true Tennessee gentlemen. <laughs> um, hey man, you know, man, you, you, you get more flies and honey than you do. What is it? What they say? Vinegar. The vinegar. That, that, that's yeah. not tasty. I said no, that better than you. I'm from the South, man. <laughs> you, you guys definitely have the Southern hospitality now. Um, so, so the new album comes out next week. Um, how are you feeling about this? Honestly, like, like, what is what is your personal connection to this to this moment in the band? I felt really strong with it because I and everyone else in the band has literally put every ounce of everything we have left in our music into this record and are still writing and demoing songs as we speak for the next record. Like this record is only the beginning of the new writing album. So, so you guys came into this already ready for round two. Uh, we've been writing songs since we stepped off the last We wrote about 30 songs for this record, and we've already got three or four new song ideas already down the list. So, so with that in mind, we, we can expect a follow-up to this. We can expect this to just be the beginning. Very true. Okay. I'm relieved. I'm very happy to hear that. <laughs> I'm, I'm, you, you guys always have a, a huge motor behind you, so I like that. It's awesome, man. Um, how you get it. For those that weren't here, you guys have a little guest here at the end of your set, at the very end. A uh, little guy by the name of, uh, what's his, what's his name? Well, he plays in Shinnadome. <laughs> Shinnadome. Oh, that's right, that's right. Uh, Zach from Shinedome. Shinedome, yeah, that's Zach Meyer's guy, him. Um, you guys uh, in, in Shango, Shango, go a little back. Um, how did he end up here playing with you guys? Um, actually, he does a solo project, and his solo project had a day off today, and he was in the area, so he come by and hang out with us. Uh, but he he is good friends with some friends we know from Memphis. That's how we were actually circulating with friends. But we recently just went to uh, Charleston, South Carolina, to work on a couple tunes with. Uh, Eric Bass, which is the bass player from Shinnadome. And so we are the, actually the new song Criminal is single. We actually worked with him on that song. Um, right now, if, if we can make it happen, we're gonna try to do the whole next record. Interesting. Did, to be honest, did you just come up with Shinnadome? No, we told Eric, we, we were just, we, we thought that it'd be a very fun time to just act like we can't pronounce this band. I, I, I would love to see hashtag, hashtag Shinnadome. <laughs> how, do how do you spell Shinnadome? S-H-I-N-E-D-O-N-O-T-E. <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, Shinedown Syndrome is what I've heard before. Sh 
giant down syndrome? Yeah, but you know, we just we had a good time with it. We were like cutting up out the side of the group, and finally we just like stand in front of Eric. We're like, dude, that one band you're playing should have done. Oh my god. And uh, we had a good laugh. You know, everyone on tour makes fun of band names. Trust me, we've heard them all. There are a few I recall for your band. I'm not going to say them, but if you want to say some of the ones you've heard, just use your imagination, right? Yes. Just, just, just try to rhyme just a little bit. It, it, it's fun. You guys are all about having fun. So. Oh, yes, yes. Actually, as soon as this is over, I'm about to have a lot of fun. I love you, Michigan people. You're crazy. Right. You guys really do. You like Michigan. What, what, what is it about Michigan? Being from Tennessee, what is it about Michigan that you guys like so much? I don't know, you know, you go into some cities and states that just don't have that vibe for rock and roll anymore. And this is one place that you can hear from the response that they're having on the stage right now. It's just you people, you Michigan people love me. Nice catch. We do, we do, we do. Thank, thank you for the compliments. So I appreciate you and we'll keep coming back. We appreciate you, Brandon, buddy, as always, good to see you. It's been so. far too long. Welcome back. Oh, it ain't gonna be the last time.